Friends, hey, how's it going? Ash here with Gents Ents. Hope you're doing well. You're looking great today. Shout out to my wife, Chelsea, and her friends for helping me put this list together. Uh, give yourselves a round of applause. None of you are watching this, but sentiments going out to you. 10 fragrances that drive women crazy. Now, when I say crazy, what do I mean? Do I mean like in one of those movies where, where everybody just loses their mind and they start going on a rampage? No, not, not that kind of crazy. That would be bad. That means you should actively avoid these. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about those compliment getters today, those fragrances that draw positive attention, fragrances that just seem to work better than the other ones out there. We got niche. We got designer. Let's jump into it. Let's check them out. Codes, Gents10, TwistedLily.com, LuckyScent.com. Gents10 works on both those websites. Save yourself 10%. If you want niche fragrances, if you want indie fragrances, those are the places you need to go. That's the code you use. Unless you just want to pay full retail because you want to spite yourself because for whatever reason, you don't love yourself. That's not good, man. Love yourself. JomaShop.com, Gents8. Save yourself $8 off any order over $110. I'll have those linked in the description below, as well as these good old scents we're gonna be talking about here today. Good old scents, that's like the same thing as good old boys down south. These are some good old scents, man. I'll tell you what, dude, Peebo, man, these scents get you some compliments, bro. Do people actually talk like that down south? Yes, but also no, but yes. Not everyone, though. Okay, first up, Amouage Reflection Man. This is the original Reflection Man. Still works just as well today as when this thing was getting hyped to the moon and back. Apparently the new Reflection Man, the x also does really well at pulling compliments, but I don't have that one yet. I will eventually, but it's kind of pricey. This one has jasmine, neroli, iris, and sandalwood as some of the notes in the fragrance. For a while, people would say, this is kind of like a niche, a uh, high quality version of Jean-Paul Gaultier Le Mal. Does it have that powdery sort of nature to it? Yeah, it does, but it doesn't smell super close to Lamal. But what it does do is pull compliments like Lamal did in its heyday. Reflection Man is great for that. It's very classy, it's sophisticated, it's an easy fragrance to wear to the office or in more formal situations. Great during the spring and fall, and you can wear it in summer as well. But with this being an amouage, do be aware, it's packing a pretty good punch. You know, it's got some firepower in there. I don't know why that came out of my chest like that, but it's got some firepower, so in summer, time be careful with great power comes great responsibility Spooderman said that and also uncle ben after that yves saint laurent's why eau de toilette the eau de toilette gets forgotten about compared to the eau de parfum and le parfum and why live and why au fresh and basically probably every why that will ever exist everybody just acts like why eau de toilette doesn't exist they treat it like the red-headed stepchild they tell it to go stand in the corner you know don't get your nose out of the corner don't look at me I don't want to see your face. That's how people treat it. But you shouldn't treat it that way because it has a lot to offer. It's got a good personality. It's really approachable. It's charismatic. Give it a chance. Vanilla, lavender, bergamot, and ginger, some of the notes in the fragrance. I think that out of all the Y fragrances, this is actually the most versatile. It's a huge compliment puller too. It's just sometimes, like I said, it's overlooked. But this one, more than any of the fragrances in the line, I think makes a great year-round fragrance. Spray it on a little bit more during the winter, you know, help it cut through the cold. Awesome office fragrance. And the new reformulation, better than the original Y Eau de Toilette. So this is one of those circumstances where the fragrance got changed and you don't have to worry about going and buying the original at a jacked up price because the new version's better. They did you a solid this time. Nine times out of 10, when a brand does that, they reformulate something, everybody goes, ah, oh, ah, it was better originally. What have you done? You've ruined it. But this time you go, hey, thanks for that. Thanks, YSL, cool. After that one, Leighton, Parfums de Marley. I mean, I don't need to say too much. Right. Apple, vanilla, cinnamon, lavender, sandalwood, some of the notes here in this scent. This is one of the easiest to wear fall and winter niche fragrances on the market. It's Parfums de Marley's biggest, heaviest hitter. Everybody seems to have smelled this or own this, but just because it's super popular doesn't mean that I should not feature it. Layton is absolutely amazing at pulling positive attention. This is one of the best niche compliment pullers, period. And so of course I got to include it. And that's all I have to say about that. Up next, Dylan Blue from Versace. This one, uh, not up there with Sauvage a lot of times or Bleu de Chanel or Y Eau de Parfum when you're talking about designer 
blue fragrances that pull compliments, that pull positive attention, that people really gravitate toward. It oftentimes does not get uttered in the same breath as those scents, but it works just as well. And it's also a little more affordable from discounters than those fragrances, so that's nice too. This one to me follows that Bleu de Chanel blueprint a little bit in the sense that you have that very nice opening with ginger and citrus. Then as it dries down, ambroxan and incense come out. It's following the blueprint, but it's maybe not quite as classy or sophisticated or mature as Blue de Chanel is, but it has just as much versatility and actually might work a little bit better for younger guys than Blue de Chanel. That being said, Blue de Chanel is basically like the pinnacle of an everyday wear blue scent, but I'm not talking about that right now. Dylan Blue, even though some people overlook it, is right there with those fragrances, the Sauvages, the YSL Wild de Parfums, as far as pulling compliments and attention goes, but it's not gonna break the bank. What should we talk about next, guys? Ah, uh, how about this one? Spice Bomb Infrared. Pull the pin, bro. It's time to unleash the compliments. <laughs> I don't know. That, it seemed like it would be funny at the time, but then in retrospect, I think it was, uh, I was actually just kind of stupid. My face smells like a uh, bomb of spice that's about to explode, like in scanners. Cinnamon, tobacco, red apple, and pimento, some of the notes in the fragrance. Infrared is a, a really good fragrance. It's a return to form a little bit for Spice Bomb. Great at pulling attention, which of course is what this whole list is about. Spice Bomb Night Vision Eau de Toilette and Eau de Parfum came out and people weren't very pumped about it. Not happy about Spice Bomb eschewing the spices and welcoming the Dark Lord Invictus into their lives. I don't know why I just acted like Invictus is the Dark Lord, but stupid. Uh, but yeah, Night Vision, it's just really, um, Bubble gummy sweet, you know, it's not so spicy, which is kind of a problem when your fragrance's name is Spice Bomb. It's kind of on the nose, that name, Spice Bomb. So if you don't have that, what are you doing? But infrared corrects that. It gives us a whole bunch of red fruits and spices. It's got pimento, it has pink pepper, it has cinnamon, it has uh, tobacco in there as well, which is always a hit. People love the tobacco in fragrances. So infrared, really well done, redeems the line from night vision and uh, actually provides that bomb of spice. Okay, next one is from Mansara. It is Cidrat Boise. Now I could have had intense Cidrat Boise in here. I like that one a lot. Actually, I personally like it a little bit more than the original, but the original is tried and tested. So this is one people have been rocking for a long time. People know that this one works. Lemon, currant, spices, cedar, and leather, some of the notes in the fragrance, gets compared to uh, Creed's Aventus quite often, but when you spray them on side by side, they're a, a lot different. I mean, you can pick up some similarities there, like the black currant, but uh, yeah, they're, they're two different, two different scents here not ultra close. Great performance with this one. Nearly a year round scent, I'd say, or not nearly, it is a year round scent. Just spray it on uh, different amounts, depending on where you're going, who you're hanging with, temperature, all that stuff. The sweetness in here really helps it pull that attention. I've talked about this before, but fresh fragrances, sweet fragrances always do so well for me. And Cedrat Boise, more so than Creed Aventus, has a lot of sweetness, especially in the opening. As it dries down, some of that fruity sweetness steps back, fades away, but that's where you have vanilla that comes in with the leather and the cedar. So you're just swapping out one type of sweetness for another as it dries. Next up, let's talk about an Azaro fragrance, the most wanted, Parfum. Also, you could go with just the most wanted, the one that came out before this one. That works really well, and Wanted by Night does also. But if you're just going for the absolute most stone cold killer of compliment pullers in this line, then this is the one you want to check out right now. They keep the note breakdown here derpily simple, which I don't like, and I love to complain about it like a little Karen, a little male fragrance Karen complaining about the note breakdown. You only gave me three notes. Mm. Wah. Ginger, woods, and bourbon vanilla. There's your note breakdown. Thank you, have a good day. Uh, don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you. That's what Azaro tells us. And yet, in spite of me complaining about that, they have given us a fragrance here that is riding the coattails riding the wave of popularity of men's fragrances right now that have a gourmandy sweetness, that caramel toffee kind of feeling. They're giving us that 
in spades and doing it so well. So I can't stay mad at them. Also, I really like the bottle, you know? So that's something. I like that coloration. I like that coloration. It looks slick. So even though they're only hitting us with three notes, the sweetness in here, that spiciness, that warmth is done so expertly well that this one, almost more than any other fragrance over the past year or two, is a certifiable compliment monster in the cool weather. So keep your eyes open for this. If you've never smelled it, if you see it in a store, pick it up, give it a spray, not on a tester strip, spray it on your skin, see how it works. Okay, last niche fragrance for this video. It's from By Killian. It is Angel's Share. Now this is sweetness turned up to 11 in that warm, spicy sort of way. It is unisex leaning masculine, so ladies can pull this off just as easily. And I would say it pulls compliments from both women and men. Everybody seems to gravitate toward this stuff. Like moths to a bug zapper. Does that sound very appealing when you're talking about a fragrance? No but it kind of works like that. So just imagine that, but in a really nice way, like bugs to a bug zapper without the instantaneous electrocution. Instead, they just walk over and go, what you wearing? Praline, cognac, cinnamon, vanilla, and tonka, some of the notes in the fragrance. Every single one of those notes I just read off to you, really sweet. But as far as boozy gourmandy fragrances, Angel Share is right up toward the top as far as being just massively appealing and very easy to wear in cool weather. And the bottle does look really cool, even if the cap does that turkey call thing. Best fragrance in that new line by far. Okay, next fragrance is one that I love to hate. It's One Million Parfum. Occasionally, I'll get a message from one of you guys, an email, and you'll be like, hey, do you still dislike One Million Parfum? Because I like it a lot. And I say, awesome, I'm so glad that you like it. Absolutely wear it. Don't let my opinion sway you at all. But no, I, say, I don't like it, man. But guess what? My wife does, and her friends do. And like everybody I come into contact with does. So I'm just that one weird dude out on an island uh, spear fishing for fish, just like away from society. Everybody else is like, one million parfum is over here and it's awesome. And I'm just over there like, <laughs> okay. I'm just over here on my own island, I guess. Tuberose, solar notes, leather, ambergris, some of the notes in the fragrance, quite sweet. Has kind of a sun lotion vibe to it. Definitely a, a beachy summer fragrance if you dial that sweetness up to like 10. That's how it comes across off my skin uh, and people love it. Absolutely love it. So if you're looking for attention, this will get it for you, believe that. And you know, I have worn it a few times where my wife will be like, oh, just try it out. So I'll, I'll throw it on there. And truth be told, you know, given multiple wearings, I don't dislike it as much now as I used to at all. But do I love it? Nah. But a lot of that positive attention does help. You know, it helps take the sting off when you don't like something. When a lot of people are telling you how awesome you smell, you're like, uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, I know. <laughs> oh, yeah. This one does smell good, doesn't it? Doesn't it? but eventually it makes you like it a little more. So I'll come around to it a little, but still out of everything in today's video, it's my least favorite. All right, last one, Jean-Paul Gaultier Scandal Pour Homme. This is the original, not the new flanker, though I do like the new flanker a good amount. Just haven't been able to wear that one as much. So this is one of those new fragrances that makes use of caramel. I talked about that a little bit before with uh, the Most Wanted Parfum, really popular right now. Also has Tonka in here, has Vetiver, has Mandarin Orange, but that caramel is really the thing that makes this fragrance. So it's one of those scents going along with the, the current trend of uh, warm, sweet, gourmand-ish type of men's fragrances. This one grew on me a lot from the first time that I wore it, and part of the reason for that is because it does pull positive attention so well. With the caramel here, you definitely get that sweetness, you get that gourmand flair, but maybe it doesn't take it quite as far as some of the other really popular fragrances in that style, stuff like maybe the Most Wanted Parfum or the Stronger With You line. So while it has that that style to it, that DNA to it, it reigns it in a little bit. But that being said, it does still have some Tonka in there with some additional sweetness. So yeah, it still is a really sweet scent at the end of the day, but awesome at pulling attention. So if that's all you want. There you go. All right, guys, there we have it. 10 fragrances that drive women crazy. Each one of these in their own way is a certified monster. Thanks for hanging with me today. In the comments below, let me know the fragrances that you reach for when you care about nothing other than just getting some positive attention. Like, what's your go-to? Thank you for hanging with me. Thanks for your support. Stay safe out there. See you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.